Gracious God, from whom cometh every good and perfect gift, we bow in your holy presence to thank you for life and the numerous blessings that you, God, continue to send us from day to day. Lord, I pray your continued blessings on all gathered here, but especially now, I pray for Dame Janice Pereira. Lord, you have been mighty good to her. I ask you, God, that as she receives yet another honor, that you will keep her humble and trusting in you, O oh God, in the midst of all her successes. Keep her cheerful in the face of failure. Let her always be determined in spite of difficulties and always be honest in all her dealings. Hear my prayer, O oh God, on her behalf and bless her family. May God grant you his peace, his wisdom, and his understanding. May he keep you in perfect health as you continue to serve God and your fellow men. In Christ's name, we ask all these blessings. Amen. Welcome to this morning's Anniversary uh, Ceremony. My name is Sinclair Amory, Superintendent of Police, and I'll be chairing the ceremony this morning. I now invite the governor to the podium to read the citation. Dame Janis M. Pereira was born in Virgin Gorda and received her primary education at the North Sound Primary School. She graduated from the BVI High School in 1975 and was named Student of the Year and Top Student in English. Dame Janice obtained her Bachelor of Laws degree with honors from the University of the West Indies in 1979 and interned with the firm Harney Westwood and Regals in the BVI. She then attended the Norman Manley Law School and in 1981 obtained her Certificate of Legal Education. Dame Janice was called to the bar in the Territory of the Virgin Islands in 1981 and the bar of St. Kitts and Nevis in 2000. During the period 1981 to 1984, she acted as Registrar of the Supreme Court and Registrar General of the Registry of Companies in the BVI. From 1984 to 85, she held the position of Registrar, Registrar General of the Supreme Court and the Registry of Companies and International Business Companies. She also served as additional magistrate and acted as a magistrate during that period. Between 1985 and 1989, she practiced as an associate lawyer with J.S. Archibald and Co. and had a short stint with Harney Westwood and Regals and then joined the firm Mac W. Todman and Co. In 1990, she then partnered with Jerry Ferrara QC uh, to form the firm Carrara and George Creaky, now Ferrara and Kerens, and she remained there until 2003. In September 2003, she was appointed judge of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court and was assigned to serve the territories of Anguilla and Montserrat. In January 2009, Dame Janice was elevated to the position of Justice of Appeal. And in August 2012, she was appointed to act as Chief Justice of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court and was appointed to the substantive post on the 28th of September 2012. In May 2003, Dame Janice was appointed by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II as Dame Commander of the Order of the British Empire. This appointment was made on the recommendation of all the heads of government of the Eastern Caribbean states in recognition of her many years of distinguished service as a law officer of the Crown and as a judge. Dame Janice is, as most of you know, 
the first BV Islander to be appointed to a dame home. Thank you, Your Excellency. I now invite Dame Janice Brera and her two supporters, Premier Dr. Orlando Smith and the Paul Webster QC to come forward, please. I now like to invite Deputy Governor V. Annis Archibald to come and read the world warrant. Elizabeth II, by the grace of God, of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and of her other realms and territories, Queen, Head of the Commonwealth, Defender of the Faith, and Sovereign of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire, to our trusty and well-beloved Janice Mercedes Pereira, greeting. Whereas we have thought fit to nominate and appoint you to be an ordinary dame commander of the civil division of our said most excellent order of the British Empire, we do by these presents grant unto you the dignity of an ordinary dame commander of our said order and hereby authorize you to have, hold, and enjoy the said dignity and rank of an ordinary dame commander of our aforesaid order, together with all and singular the privileges therewith, belonging or appertaining, given at our court at St. James's under our sign manual and the seal of our said order this 26th day of April, 2013, in the 62nd year of our reign by the Sovereign's command. Thank you, Madam Deputy Governor. I now invite the Governor to present the insignia and royal. Thank you for that round of applause. Your Excellency, Mrs. McClary, my supporter, the Honorable Premier, Dr. Orlando Smith, other ministers of government, Ronnie Skelton, Speaker of the House, our Deputy Governor, Mrs. Archibald, Pastor Gracia Stevens, my other supporter, Justice of Appeal, Paul Webster, Queen's Counsel, Honorable Judges, Justice Ellis, Justice Bayer, Justice Bannister, Honorable Attorney General, the President of the BVI Bar Association, and my other friends over here, and other colleagues, Queen's Counsel, Mr. Ferrara, Ms. Penn, my sisters, and I always tend to leave the best for last, my husband, Joseph Pereira. <laughs> I am so very honored to have been bestowed with this rank and title and dignity of Dame Commander. I, I think His Excellency knew that I was trying very hard to sort of simply come in and get away with it very quietly it was not, he would not allow it. I am really very glad that he persuaded me, I think tugging my arm along the way um, to be here and I am happy that 
this occasion came about. This honor, in my view, is not just for me. It is for my mother, who is ailing in Virgin Gorda. She's over 80 at the moment. It is for my older sister, who cares for my ailing mother and so could not be here. It is for my sisters, my brothers. It is for all of the women, girls, young women of the Virgin Islands. I share it with them. I wear the title of Dame Commander with a sense of pride and indeed with a sense of accomplishment, achievement. I think it is testament to the fact that not because you come from a very small island that you cannot achieve once you are willing to do so. I think I am a living example of that. I would like to thank very much His Excellency for accepting the delegation to perform the task of conferring of the title upon me this morning. I thank you, Governor McClary. I also would like to thank the Deputy Governor for reading the Royal Warrant and for Corporal Superintendent. Superintendent, my apologies, for Master, being the Master of Ceremonies. I thank Pastor Stevens, but then I know her affectionately as Teacher Gracia. And so I thank Teacher Gracia, who was my very first teacher when I started school in North Sound, Virgin Gorda, at the age of four and a half. We have been she has been more like a friend. She was always a friend of my family, always there at lunchtime, and I recall that. And she has remained with me. I wish to thank the Honorable Premier, my supporter. I think in this room I could have had any number of supporters, and for that I feel very blessed. But I thank you, Dr. Smith, for so graciously accepting that task of being my supporter. And also to my supporter, Paul Webster, who has been my friend, I think, from the days of university, and who has remained a friend um, during the years, and now currently sits as a Justice of Appeal, albeit temporarily. I was hoping it would be more permanent, but perhaps we never know. <laughs> and I also would like to thank my sisters for all the support that they have given to me over the years. I don't think that I could be where I am today without the support of so many persons, the members of my family, persons within the community. And indeed, when I return always to the Virgin Islands, I always feel that love and affection and adoration of the people. That keeps me going. It keeps me wanting to do the best that I can be when you have that kind of support. And I thank everyone, really, for coming here and supporting me by your presence here this morning. I wish to thank also, I think it would be remiss if I did not think of Mr. O'Neill, who is listed as an honorary supporter, the leader of the opposition. And I know that he would have very much liked to be here, save for the fact that his dear wife is ill and overseas. But he did, in fact, call and speak with me and tell me how much he wished to be here. And for that cause, I think is the reason why he was unable to be here today. But he's a person who has followed my career. He's always had words of encouragement, and in many respects has always been behind 
every step of my achievement all the way. And so I thought it only fit to mention him. And again, lastly and the best, I thank my husband for all of his support because in many respects, my husband is like my cheerleader every day and every evening. And I thank him for always being bright, always ready with a smile, always happy, always supportive at times when I feel stressed and I think that that is important. And so I thank all of you for this occasion, for sharing it with me. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes uh, this morning's uh, ceremony. Will you please stand? We'll now have the exit of the governor, followed by the deputy governor, by Dame, Premier, and other persons. Mm -hmm.